electronic signatures from parents on various forms. If you're a parent, you know that there's a million of them that come at you at the beginning of school and various other times. So they don't have this up and running, but they are getting closer. So in the meantime, we have put together a policy that will cover this. Um, these policies are all here for first reading. So if you have comments about uh, content or concerns, um, you can let me know um, tonight. You can come to policy meeting. Um, if there's typos, maybe you could just send me a little note because um, I don't think anybody cares about talking about the typos. So, <laughs> um, I do have a couple of comments. I can either um, tell them to you generally now or if you tell me, email me on one of the next um, policy committee meets, I can tell me they're not significant. It's just I think some of the language could be a, a bit tighter, at least in my opinion, and maybe an exception or two made. I mean, just generally speaking, public participation at meetings, you say, must submit at least one week in advance. I would think we would want to be, the board would want to be able to grant an exception. Like, for example, the mock trial team wouldn't have been added to today. They had to submit their request one week in advance. So. Well, you notice that it says the superintendent and or board chair may add the item to the agenda at their discretion. Right, but that doesn't modify the previous sentence. That simply says they make the request, and then when we can advance, and then we can add or subtract it in our discretion. It still has to be made when we can advance. I'd be glad to talk to you about this. Yeah, I think that the, the intent of that was that the superintendent or the board chair could add it at the last minute, but we can modify that sentence to I mean, be clear. I just have, maybe it's because my drafting skills, I, I see things that I think I know what you were getting at, but just copy me on the next email as to when the policy committee is not trying to make it. Yep. That would probably be easier. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions, concerns? And actually, we're not approving these. This is just a first reading, so we, yeah, we don't need to vote. Okay. Okay. Well, then let's move on to item number C, um, consideration to approve the following job description, superintendent of schools. Want do you wanna, sure. Um, um, in your packet, you will find a superintendent job description that was uh, reviewed and approved by the Human Resource Committee, um, and there's not s any substantial changes. And I was looking through, I don't know that we've lined anything, but I would defer to Ken if he recalls anything substantial. Or did we? No. Nope. So it's very similar to what we already have. And I'm, I would, excuse me, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the job description in your packet um, listed as revised 412 of 2011 for the superintendent. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Right. Any discussion, questions? Is, it, is this um, in our superintendent search, have we been using this description or do we not include a job description? We don't. We don't? We have not included the job Okay, so we're not going to be in conflict. Okay, mm -mm. that's all I need to know. Mm -mm. <coughs> Any other questions, concerns? <coughs> okay. All right, all those in favor? Thank you. All right, um, item number D, consideration to approve the following staff nomina nominations for 2011-2012. Ken? Yes, the hiring season. I'll have four or five at your next meeting as well. Oh. Um, you have quite a bit of background information on each of these candidates for, for the benefit of the public. Let me just send an abstract about each one. Uh, Nancy Murray is, is the recommendation for middle school music. And Nancy um, received her bachelor's of music education from the University of Maine in Orono. Uh, after completing her student teacher internship in the Wyndham School Department, Nancy began substituting regularly in that district and then spent nine years in the business field in a variety of settings and then she returned to a career in music. Since that time, Nancy has been a middle school classroom teacher in, at Westbrook um, 
where she has a teaching assignment very similar to ours. She comes to us from Westbrook with the highest of recommendations. The nomination for the fifth, sixth grade teacher is Laura Griggs. Um, this is a fifth, sixth grade looping classroom of language arts and social studies. Laura earned her Bachelor of Arts in Geography from Middlebury College, then went on to MIT where she earned a degree in city planning. She later earned her master's degree in instructional learning from the University of Pittsburgh. Laura has taught grades two, three, and five in South Portland for the past three years. She's a resident of Cape Elizabeth, and again, she comes with glowing recommendations from the South Portland school system. Uh, another middle school teacher, Daniel Hunter. Um, Daniel received her Bachelor's of Science Education from Western Illinois, uh, where she minded in literacy. She went on to earn her Master's of Science in Curriculum Instruction from Concordia University. Uh, she has uh, extensive experience teaching in the Jacksonville, Florida, and in Wilmette, Illinois. Um, she is not a stranger to our schools because she substituted for one of our teachers for an extended period of time. And again, she comes highly recommended from both the Jacksonville and the Wilmette experience. The last one tonight is Catherine Bach. Um, Catherine uh, is presently the department head uh, of science at Lincoln Academy, and she's held that position since 1998. Uh, she's also taught a year at the University of Delaware. She has a Master's of Science from the University of Delaware and her Bachelor's from Dickinson. And again, like the others, uh, rave reviews from Lincoln. Any questions? Ken, is the, um, the music teacher, the middle school music teacher, is this a new position or did I miss a resignation? Um, no, the middle school teacher went to um, Hong Kong. Oh, great. To retirement. Great, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Just one quick question on the last one. Um, I'm trying to find it. Um, oh, I think I found it. Um, so she was interviewed by the science department, or somebody at the science department high school? Yeah, all of our interviews are team interviews, including, which usually include the principal and several teachers. Of, of the particular area the teacher's going into? Okay. And then, um, with all these, the general principle is, as I think you articulated uh, in a executive committee meeting, is that the, the goal is we're not hiring somebody or not continuing to hire somebody unless your rule is that they will provide you know, excellent teaching, not just good, but excellent. Right, right, right. Are right. you really looking for people that will add value mm -hmm. and do it quickly? And I think you've got a good group here. Thank you for the information. Yeah. Anyone else? No? Do I have a motion? I, I'll move uh, to approve uh, the following staff nominations for 211. 2011-12, Nancy Murray, Laura Briggs, Danielle Kunit, Kunit mm -hmm. and Catherine Bach uh, for the position set forth in uh, 7D of our agenda. Okay. Thank you. Second. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Great. Thank you. All right, we will move on to item E, consideration to approve proposal regarding non-union employees' salaries and benefits. Um, do I have a motion? And then we'll save discussion. John. Um, uh, oh, it's, let's see. Well, I move that we approve the proposal. Is it in our package? Uh, the superintendent's proposal for non-union non employee salaries and benefits. Okay. It's set, it, it, it's one that's set forth in a um, memo entitled uh, Cape Elizabeth School Department 2010-2011 
Central Office Employee Survey and Maintenance Director and School Nutrition Director. So that's what we're voting on. It, it, it's not that. It's not that document that you're holding up. Actually, it's 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 a document that was presented to us in executive session. That the one you're holding up is a was a comparative, you're right. comparative survey, uh, but it's labeled classified employees. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Just a second. Okay. Discussion? Any discussion? Well, the, the, the other document that David mentioned is a survey of how these, how Cape Elizabeth non-union uh, school department employees' salaries compared to those of our uh, comparable districts. Um, and in, in most of these positions, um, Cape salaries are, are, are sort of right in the middle of the marketplace um, in terms of the, the, the proposed salaries. So, uh, for that reason, um, in, in, the, in that the, the, this proposal represents uh, paying market rate salaries for uh, these uh, employees, I would support the proposal. Could I just add to what John said that um, I think our role as a uh, school board is to look to comparable labor markets for what we pay people. Um, and and uh, we had an excellent summary done of um, looks like five other school systems for each one of these positions and on average um, and was comparing, trying to compare apples to apples in terms of the type of work they do prepared by Pauline and I, I think it's fair to say that uh, we're about in the middle of the fair market. We're not at the high end and not at the low end, if you will, on an overall rough average. And I think we're proposing a 2% raise for these people. And I think that's uh, conservative and will still keep my, I still think that'll keep us competitive in the marketplace, which is what we need to do. So I support it. Okay. Anyone else? Any comments? All those in favor? So no. Thank you. Um, our next item, item F, is in addition to the agenda, and this concerns the Freedom of Information Act letter that the board will be sending to the legislature. Um, Kim or David, would you like to um, give a brief overview of that letter? Sure. Um, Tomorrow, the Legislature's Joint Committee on Judiciary will consider the following LD 1465, an act to amend the laws governing freedom of access. Uh, as members of the Cape Elizabeth School Board, we have uh, unanimously, unanimously um, uh, agree with the um, main school management, MSMA, in recommending that they um, defer the proposed bill to the Right to Know Advisory Committee for review, which basically encourages the Judiciary Committee to vote ought not to pass. Um, and um, briefly, um, we support the general concept of the Freedom of Access Act and its efforts to support a transparent government. We strongly believe the proposed initiatives, however, outlined in LD 1465 would not serve in the best interests of our state and local municipalities. The piece of legislation would create burdensome operating conditions, inhibit government functionality, and ultimately cause greater harm than good. So again, it is being considered in the uh, Judiciary Committee tomorrow, and we will be uh, sending this uh, letter with signatures for the Judiciary Committee to consider tomorrow. Could I add two <clears throat> things to that? In addition yes. to yeah. recommending that, uh, the reason why we're, we're recommending uh, ought not to pass is that the changes would impose substantial and almost impossible to comply with requirements. It would basically involve um, hiring at least probably half a person as uh, uh, somebody who's involved in responding to Freedom of Information Act requests it would require us to respond within 24 hours. It could be an oral request at a football thing on a Saturday and you have to respond by Sunday night. I mean, it's, it's really unnecessary given the fact that the 
existing Freedom of Information Act is one of the broadest, uh, most liberal statutes.